So YouTube, team keep it clean. Uh, what's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. Uh, this is a video that I figured um, was probably gonna make this year. I actually initially thought it was gonna happen uh, last year, especially with them having drafted Rashad Bateman and Tylen Wallace, and then uh, Miles Boykin having that injury uh, at the beginning of the season, like right before it started. I believe it was a hamstring injury. I thought the Ravens were going to uh, move on last season, but they didn't. Um, but you could tell by their actions, which spoke a lot louder than their words, um, you could tell that uh, last year was it uh, when it came to Miles Boykin. Reason I say that is because when he did get healthy, he recovered from his hamstring, he had recovered from, I think it was a, the, a pinky injury, is either pinky or the index finger, either one. Uh, he recovered from both of those injuries and he was just on special teams. Uh, and then I think he might have caught like, had maybe a pass go his way, maybe two at the most, but you could tell like that was it. They didn't hardly have him on offense anymore. Um, and it just seemed like he had ran his course. Like that was a, that was a wrap. Um, so with that being said, um, the Ravens are releasing him. They, they releasing him, cutting him, waving him, whatever you want to call it. Uh, his time with the Baltimore Ravens is over. Now, he was, of course, a third-round pick in 2019, and there were flashes. There were flashes. Uh, most of them came in 2019. There were a couple that came in 2020. Uh, we didn't really get to see much of him this past season. Uh, but I remember in 2019, first game of the season. First game of the season. I know everybody remembers the, the game Lamar Jackson against the Browns from last season where Lamar Jackson, he's dropping back and back and back and back and back. He got Jadavian Clowney coming from one side, Miles Garrett coming from the other side, and he throws it up in the end zone. Mark Andrews comes down with it. But the very first time that he did that in the NFL, it was week one, 2019, against the Miami Dolphins, when Lamar Jackson, he's dropping back, dropping back, and going backwards and shh, launches it back at the end zone, touchdown, Miles Boykin. Um, and then uh, one of the more memorable plays from Miles Boykin, uh, his rookie year in 2019, um, it came against the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, I think it was the very, either the very first play of the game or definitely the first drive against the Seahawks. Well, Lamar dropped back and launched it up. And Miles Boykin, with a cornerback draped all over him, came down with it. And then, of course, uh, the probably most memorable play for him uh, in 2020 was against the Cowboys. Uh, where he threw to Miles Boykin. He made one guy miss, had some good blocks in front of him, and took it to the end zone. So there were these flashes uh, with Miles Boykin and the Baltimore Ravens, but then there were some not so pleasant flashes. Uh, we remember the play against, I think it was the Washington football team, um, where I think RG3 just threw him a bomb, and, and he just. He wasn't ready for it. I think RG3 might have thrown a little bit early. There was another play. I think it was against the Browns in week one of 2020 um, where Miles Boykin, it was a, they weren't going for a back shoulder. They were going for a, little co a comeback route in the end zone because the Ravens were like on a 10-yard line or something like that. They were super close. Uh, Lamar Jackson threw it to Miles Boykin anticipating him having turned around a bit early and the, the, the timing and the chemistry is just way off. It was just way off. And that was probably the theme when it came to Lamar Jackson and Miles Boykin. The chemistry just wasn't there. It wasn't there. Um, and what I'm hoping is that moving forward, uh, wherever Miles Boykin ends up landing, wherever he ends up going, uh, whatever team he catches on with, hopefully this new team will utilize him the right way. Uh, hopefully this new team will... Uh, really maximize his potential and it just it won't just be potential he won't just be oh known as a blocking wide receiver no 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 no. because that offensive linemen are supposed to be known for their blocking now it's a good thing that he can block uh but you got to use him more than just a blocker and the ravens just they they didn't do that we always talk about it on here how with the baltimore ravens for receivers especially if you're not drafted in the first round it's, it's going to be a long shot for you to make it. It's going to be a long shot for you to have a successful career with the Baltimore Ravens. If you are not a first-round receiver, and even with a first-round receiver, it's not even a given. 
Like, you have Travis Taylors, you have Mark Claytons, you have Rashad Perrymans that they didn't make it. They didn't make it. But now you have a Hollywood Brown and you have a Rashad Bateman and they look to be well on their way. But still, even the first, so the first round is not a given. But then even the, the second round, ooh, it's, that's where it gets really shaky. Of course, we know about Torrey Smith, but other than that, what, what receiver did they draft in the second round? I don't even remember, but Torrey Smith made it. But then you go to third round, and after that, it's, no. Nah, it just, it doesn't happen. Why? Because they don't invest into those guys like that. They don't. They don't invest into those guys like that. So I Duvernay, third round pick, scary. Miles Boykin was a third round pick. You see that? James Prochet is a fifth or sixth round pick. Tylen Wallace, a fourth round pick. The investment's just, it's not there like that when it comes to those later round picks for the Ravens. So hopefully they can change that. Hopefully. I, I wish we could have got Keith uh, Martin and T, I mean, T Martin and Keith Williams a little earlier. I wish we could have got them in 2018 or 2019. I, I wish. Because maybe the trajectory of Ravens receivers might have tilted on the right side a little bit earlier. A little bit earlier. Um, but either way, uh, with Miles Boykin, I, um, it, it, was, it was said, mm, what is this? This April, it's April 15th, 3.48 p.m. It was said uh, about a month ago. Well, actually, yeah, a little tiny bit more than a month ago. Maybe like a month and a couple of days. Because I think it was right before free agency. Or maybe it was during free agency. Either way, it was said a little over a month ago that the Ravens were trying to trade Miles Boykin. Um, and when that report came out, we just knew it, it, it was a matter of time. I actually thought that something like this, whether he was traded or released or whatnot, I actually thought something like this would happen sooner, especially once, once that report came out. Because when reports like that come out, that means, all right, the team, they've been trying to deal this player, but they haven't gotten the right compensation for him. So they're doing one last effort, one last pitch to everybody, one last, all right, let's go for it. Let's put it out there to see, okay, what can we get for this player? What kind of draft picks, what kind of, what kind of capital can we get for this player? It's, it's the team giving one last effort to try to make it happen. Uh, so I thought that this would happen, like I said, a, a whole lot sooner than it is happening. Um, but no. So the timing, the timing with this, it is uh, a couple of weeks before the draft. It certainly is. But at the same time, um, ooh, time is a little tricky. Uh, young guy. So that's good. Uh, the potential is there. You just got to reach in, get it out. That's it. And I think with Boykin, I always said this, said this from jump, said it, that with Boykin, it's all about opportunity and it's, it's about volume. It's about volume. Yeah, we know there's only one football that goes around, but it's about volume. You give him the, the looks, the targets, then he'll make something happen for you. It just, it was not happening there with the Ravens, though. It just wasn't. It wasn't. We keep talking about uh, want a big body receiver and all that. Yeah, one sitting right there, but just ain't giving the chance. Just ain't giving the chance. So, I do um, I do respect that they are releasing him. Uh, reason I say that is because you wouldn't want a, a, a Tyson Williams situation to where you know the guy just needs a shot and he could do his thing, but you just holding him down. And you're just keeping him around like, oh. So I respect that they are releasing him. I w like I said, I wish it would have happened sooner for his sake. Uh, so he would have been able to catch on with the team a little bit earlier. But all right, cool. It is what it is. They're they releasing him now. All right. So hopefully, again, wherever he goes next, he can go there and, and go do his thing. Wherever he goes next, hopefully he, he could take off. Wherever he goes next, hopefully it could be a more – Pass heavy offense, the offense that's really throwing the ball like that, and he could take off. So we'll see, man. We'll see. Um, recent receivers uh, that I can think that the Ravens drafted, uh, um, that where they they moved on. Bashar Perryman, it certainly got better for him after the Ravens. He went to the Browns. He did his thing over there. Uh, he went to the Bucks. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I think he was on the Lions for a little bit too. But he went to the Bucks and he he did his thing. 
he wasn't getting all these eye popping numbers, but his impact was better. And it was just really with the Browns. I think the Browns, that was his best stint. And he even burned the Ravens too. Ooh, y'all remember the game? Week 17. Week it was week 17. The the game to get into the playoffs. 2018. Lamar Jackson versus Baker Mayfield. All or nothing. So he he caught the Ravens slipping on that one. Um, who else? Torrey Smith. Torrey Smith, he went on to greener, well, not greener pastures, but he still did his thing. Won another Super Bowl with the Eagles. Uh, he went to the 49ers first, went to the Eagles, went to the Panthers. I feel like he went to one more team, too, but that's all I can remember. Um, Jordan Lashley. Jaleel Scott went to the Jets. Eh, that didn't work out. Jordan Lashley went, I think he went to the Raiders real quick, but that it didn't work out. Um and I'm trying to think anybody else off the top of my head, but right now I just, I, I really can't. It's, nobody's really coming to me like that. So we wish you Miles Boykin the best. Y'all already know what time it was, man. Um, hope, hopefully everything works out in his favor and this can be his chance to get a real shot. Because with a lot of players, I know a lot of fans, and this is not just with the Ravens. This it can happen with any single team. A lot of fans could be like, oh, that guy's terrible. This guy sucks. This guy's bad. This guy can't play. He can't catch. He can't run. He can't block. He can't do this. He can't do that. He's not good. A lot of fans, they quick to do that because that's, that's what fans do. It's normal. Um, but so much is based on situation. So much is based on where you're at. If you're at the right place at the right time or if you're at the wrong place at the wrong time. So much is based on that. And we've seen that. We see it with quarterbacks. Wide receivers tight. We see it with all kinds of players. A player can be a beast. They can be a monster. They go to the wrong organization, and it's like, ooh, all that can change. Because that organization, maybe not, they may not specialize in that particular position. They may not specialize in really maximizing that particular position. So that player goes to a team, but that team, they just, they can't do it. They don't do it. That's not what they do. So hopefully he goes to a team. That does. Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Um, and I guess that's it. So just like my guy Miles Boykin is, I'm out. But I, I, I'm excited to see where he catches on. I, I can't wait, man. I love y'all. Shout out to Boykin. Shout out to y'all. We gone.